All right, welcome to Inputs and Outputs. This is part three, uh, look into how the computer processes inputs and its data and then controls outputs. We left off on part two with how transistors work, uh, a basic, basic understanding of how transistors work and a little bit about diagnosing them. We'll elaborate more on that next lesson. Uh, but for right now, I wanted to take a, a minute and actually look at a few old, uh, a few different, few different schematics, an old and a new. So if we take a look at this old school schematic, um, basically pre-computer control, dome lamp or city light, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's trunk lights in here, um, and uh, the gauge assembly light here. There's uh, various different switches. So anyway, basically what I want to look at is a schematic without transistors. Do you see transistors in here? Do you see computer control devices? Nope. This is pretty much the way of the world for many, many years. And we diagnose these as mechanics using Ohm's Law. And so let me take a look at these circuits. We'll walk through that. So this right here, remember this label here, hot at all times, this tells you when this fuse gets power. This one gets it at all times. So as power comes through here, if I'm checking this pin, I would expect 12 volts, right? Again, I need to know what's expected in order to know what's broken, right? I can't know what's faulty unless I know what's normal. So I need to think about what's expected. I write it down on my schematic and then when I go measure it, they should match. So I should expect right here, 12 volts it comes to a splice, 12 volts right here's 12 volts on the back side, the ground side is light. If it's off, I'm going to get 12 volts right here, right? Cause I get 12 volts up to the open. So if this switch is open right here, which means the trunk is closed. According to this description, I have 12 volts up to the tip of the switch. So I would diagnose 12 and 12 right here as normal. When I open the close, the switch closes. When I open the trunk, sorry, when the switch closes, and that's going to make this circuit from the bulb down to ground about 0.1 or less, right? So I diagnose it accordingly. This is a switch to ground circuit. Let's look over here. I have hot and run or start. So this fuse gets power when the ignition is in run or start. 12 volts comes through here when it's in run or start. 12 volts here, 12 volts here. And again, over here, all the way down to this side, tell you to splice here. All this is 12 volts until I close these switches, which I close them by opening the various doors. When any of these doors are open, the switch closes, grounding the circuit, and that turns on this indicator light right here. But also, this dome light will turn on if the switch is in the door position right here. So there's multiple, multiple switches going on right here, right? I have a double double switch system. It's still switched to ground, but for this dome light to work, this switch right here either has to be on, which grounds at the component right there, or it's in the door position, and one of the doors is open, which closes this switch, okay? Again, old school schematic, um, but I diagnose it using Ohm's Law. Well, here's the thing about a new school, okay? Basically, it, you diagnose it the same. Nothing's changed. The computer becomes the switch. Those transistors are my switches. Here's what I mean. Me, me explain my inputs and my outputs. In the circuit here, I have hot at all times, so this fuse gets power all the time. Again, 12 volts comes out, and it goes to these spotlights right here. Okay, and now these are going to work like the other component. Here I have off and on, right? So if it's on, it's component grounded right here. If it's off, that's it right there, off. 12 volts comes over to the ceiling light, and much like the previous schematic, I have three positions, off, on, and door. So on and one, it's grounded to the component right here, chassis grounded right there, and off is off, but then there's door position. So remember in the previous schematic, let's go back right here in the door position, it went down and the door directly controlled that circuit. It was a double switch, right? I'd have 12 volts. If this was on door, I would have 12 volts all the way through here up to these switches until a switch closed, then this whole circuit would become 0.1 or less, right? Well, on this circuit, it's the same thing. You just, you just can't see it in here, so it makes it confusing. But down here is a low side driver transistor, and what's going to happen is when the computer uh, decides to turn on the ceiling light, and it does that via the door switch right here still. Okay, so here is a, uh, uh, let me look right here, driver's door, lock knob switch. Uh, I don't have the door. It's on the next page. But basically, it's going to be a switch similar to this, to where when the door opens, that switch closes and that sends an input like we talked about inputs that input is going to send a signal to the computer it's going to send that point one or less just like the switch we talked about in the beginning of part one that switch input if you need to uh, be reminded go back and watch part one but basically when a switch closes that point one goes up to the computer and inside here is a fixed resistor and a voltmeter and it's going to see it go from 12 volts to point one knowing that you open the door 
then the computer that programming if this then that is going to say okay let's command the transistor right here and that transistor is going to be turned on by the computer which is going to send current and close that switch it's going to send current to ground turning on the ceiling light all that to say this if this circuit is in the door position and i have 12 volts right here that means the transistor is open right or the wire is open but basically if it's 0.1 or less the lights on that transistor is closed so i diagnose it like a switch to ground right i'm going to have point right here at this computer i'm going to have 0.1 or less when this lights on and i'm going to have 12 volts when the lights off see how that works it works very much similar my recommendation highlight powers and grounds and then at every pin or splice or terminal do that uh, like I, sh I showed you before with it looks like a fraction where the denominator is what you're expecting and the numerator is what you actually measured those should match if they don't match something's wrong right so that's my advice and I think based on what you know from this class and these PowerPoints you got this go out there and get it done okay so what's gonna happen on our next lesson well stay tuned I'm gonna show you examples of all of these circuits these inputs and outputs on my test board I'm going to work through some examples of faults and how, how to diagnose them with you. I'm going to go over uh, basically how to break these circuits down, what to anticipate, um, and again, also know or elaborate more on what I mean by highlighting circuits, uh, write down expected values so you know what's abnormal when you come across it. We'll talk a little bit about duty cycle. That's right. What is it? We'll find out next week. And then uh, a bonus info is we'll talk a little bit about the Hall effect and how we use Hall Effect sensors. Remember that for that three wire digital sensor or four wire digital sensor. So we'll talk all about that next week. And to wrap up this video, what did we learn? We described automotive computer processing. We described what a computer input is, described what a computer output is, identified how both circuits work in order to correctly diagnose the system. Boom, 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 boom. Check us out. Well, guess what? You did it. All right. I will see you next lesson.